Since I was so miserable during my first Ironman 70.3 last year, I was really nervous the day before the race for this one. But until about mile 46, when things started to go off the rails, this one was just so much fun. So congratulations to all the Finchers of Ironman 70.3 Michigan. So first off, for my usual crowd, I'll get back to tabletop gaming, miniatures, and 3D printing a little bit. My Cyrus Old Blood here needs a pretty epic Aztec-themed base, so we'll deal with that in an upcoming episode. This is one of those random ones where I kind of stray off into a different topic. Now, that was not a mistake in the intro there. Finchers is what I meant to say, because that's what the medals say here. <laughs> oh, As someone who has published plenty of stuff for the public to see and has made spelling mistakes like this before. I feel for you, Iron Man, but <laughs> it's just a funny little joke. Apparently they're gonna send us new medals with the proper spelling at some point in the not too distant future. But this year around, I had two objectives for the race. One, I was trying to break, trying to break six hours. I didn't quite do that. I came in in about six hours, 19 minutes. We'll talk about the details of that in a minute here. However, it turns out that Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg is in my age group and I beat him, so that's what's important. <laughs> Whenever you beat the federal government, it's always a good thing. Objective number two was actually Lionel Sanders, one of the probably most famous pro triathletes was racing there. I was hoping to see him. Sort of got to see him. Funny little story here. I was walking past Transition on the Saturday before the race, and I saw the bike racked in number one, which I assumed was him, and I took a picture of it right here. Thinking, wow, cool, I got to see Lionel Sanders' bike. But as I'm walking away from transition, I realized, wait a minute, that's the wrong rear disc wheel. He's actually sponsored by a company named Head, who makes the disc wheel. I'm like, well, that's weird. Maybe he's got a new sponsor or something. Well, it actually turns out for 70.3 Michigan this year, the female pros got the first batch of numbers and the male pros got the second batch of numbers. So that bike right there is actually from Tamara Jewett who would go on to win the race. So anyway, she's pretty cool too, but <laughs> so I didn't get to see Lionel Sanders then either. However, the way the race course is set up for the bike portion, you're going north out of town of Frankfurt about at about the 12 mile mark, you're going up a series of really big hills. So when I was going up those hills, the pro men who were leading the whole pack off were coming in first at that time. So they were coming back the opposite direction. And I got to see both Jackson Laundry, Lionel Sanders, and I assume Trevor Foley was number three at the time. I'm not sure if that was the case or not, but I think it was him. They were booking it down these hills. I have no idea how fast they're going, probably 45, 50 miles an hour. It was freaking intense and awesome. So. I did get to see Lionel Sanders for like three seconds, and that was incredible. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about everything that went wrong for me this year at 2023 Ironman 70.3 Michigan, starting with the swim. So last year at the race, the swim was a bit of a cluster due to all sorts of volunteer information issues, what the athletes are told, what the volunteers are told. Fortunately, that was all sorted out this year. However, the water temperature was freaking cold. <laughs> Official race temperature in the morning was like 61.7 degrees Fahrenheit, and it stung getting in that water. One thing that went well, though, is I did not have a panic attack at the start. I kind of took my time getting into it. Goggles worked fine, and then I got kicked in the face, but that's triathlon for you. <laughs> Goodness. Um, overall, though, one cool thing with the swim, I would say, is they actually had these gates you had to swim through. This is kind of how they did the traffic management this year instead of trying to do some sort of complex buoy setup that no one knew what to do with. And they were pretty cool. There are these inflatable gates, maybe about two feet off the water is where the top was. You got to swim through them. It was really a fun little thing they did. Um, overall with my swim performance, I think I was a little bit faster in terms of my pace. However, I ended up swimming a little bit further than I did last year, partly probably because they corrected some of the issues with the course, but also on the back side of the course, um, which is the longest part of the swim, you were swimming into the sun and the goggles I had weren't 
tinted enough for swimming into the morning sun, so I couldn't exactly see where all the buoys were. And I was probably a good maybe five to ten yards kind of outside the course, doing a long, basically a bigger loop around. And I kept swimming in, try to find the buoys. I would find them, then I'd go off course, and I'd find them. So I did a little bit of a zigzag motion along the back of the course, and that probably added a decent number of yardage to my swim. So all in all, I think I swam about 100 yards longer-ish. I say ish because GPS in the water is a bit sketchy than I did last year. So even though my pace per 100 yards was faster by a little bit this year, my overall time was probably just a little bit slower. But I made up that time in transition one because I knew what I was doing this year. I had my plan executed and went out there and I got on the bike by about 55 minutes, which is my first checkpoint I needed to make if I wanted to have a shot of breaking six hours. And then the bike didn't go as I really wanted it to. Now, most of the bike portion was awesome this year and I had a lot of fun as I mentioned in the intro. Now, compared to where I train, the Ironman 70.3 course is probably about four to 500 feet less in elevation climb so my assumption going into the race was that for the same amount of power that I train with, I could probably go faster at the race than I could in training. And on the easy parts of the course, that turned out to be true. I hit my power goals where I wanted to be, and I was actually going about a mile per hour faster than what I would be doing in training. Now, if I was able to maintain that speed, I've come in at a low three-hour bike ride, and that would put me closer to my six-hour goal. The problem is a lot of the elevation climb on the Michigan course is basically condensed down. So while I had a lot of sections where I was flat and faster than my normal would do in training, during those big hill climb sessions, my average speed dropped so much that at the end of the day, my overall average pace was basically what I would normally do in training. So. I ended up having about maybe five to 10 minutes more of time on the bike than I really wanted to, which kind of at that point I knew I wasn't going to break six hours, but I was going to try to go ahead and do things the best that I can. I think um, a couple problems that I did run into, like I said, around the mile 45 marker is where my legs really started killing me. This is probably a combination of I don't have my saddle position just quite right yet. I'm going to spend some time in the winter on the trainer to get that all squared away. But also, I don't think I did enough really long rides, say 45 miles and longer. I did some, maybe five or six in that range, maybe maybe four, maybe five, maybe five rides like that, about 45 miles and longer. But I probably should have done more, and I probably should have concentrated more on the bike. So next year, I'm going to try to definitely do some longer rides to help make my muscles get a little bit more accumulated or acclimated to those longer rides and hopefully that results in less pain overall. Another thing I didn't consider is that when you're training you're essentially doing an individual time trial at a set average power. Obviously hills change that. Um, but in the course of the Ironman 70.3 race while you're technically doing sort of an individual time trial you're also got other people on the course who are getting in your way and just passing people means you're going to have to put up additional time where you got to do sprints of power to get around them and I didn't really factor that into my training process so by riding at my basically maximum endurance power I could during the race I think it kind of limited my ability to pass people and there's times where I got stuck behind one, two, three people like that where they were going a little bit slower than I really wanted to and that probably held me back a little bit. So I think what I'm going to plan for next year is plan to do your average power a little bit lower than what I train at just so that way I can have some extra power saved up if I got to do some sprints to get past a few people at a time because oftentimes you will have to pass like two or three people at a time. Granted, drafting rules aren't really enforced and not even practical for the age groupers, but you know, try to follow them. <laughs> That's why sometimes you want to pass a lot of people at a time. Oh, on a random note, I did almost get run off the road by somebody because he passed me and then immediately cut in front of me before our tires were actually past each other. So, yeah, look. <laughs> when you're past an Ironman, the official rules say you have 25 seconds to fall back and get out of the draft zone, which I try to do and I usually do successfully. 
so if you're the one doing the passing, just wait a few seconds before you move over or at least look and make sure the person's out of the way. Just, it's fine. It'll be fine to stay in the left lane, of, you know, for another five, 10 seconds to make sure you don't kill people. That's all I'm gonna say. However, I did beat the guy in the race because I passed him on the run. <laughs> so let's move on to transition two. This is where I got screwed a bit. Um, this is kind of an adequate question when it comes to how you handle a triathlon. I didn't know what the best way to do things was. Because of what one of the people who was set up next to me in transition did, their bike was basically in my bike spot. So when I got to put my, rack my bike back in place, there was literally no room for it. I'm like, ah, crap. So I don't know if you're, if ideally you try to balance your bike and one arm while moving someone else's really expensive bike with another one, that seems sketchy. I was fortunate able to flag down someone in transition that was representing Iron Man, who was able to help me out. They moved the bike, got mine in, everything went on my way, but that probably cost me about two to three minutes. So that whole six hour thing is definitely out the window at this point. So the run, it started off strong. <laughs> I probably went out a bit harder than I should have. I, what was my first mile? Let me check here quickly. Mile one, 8.34, mile two, 8.30, mile three, 8.45, and it kept getting a little bit slower and slower from there until things really went off the rails. Um, let's just put it this way. I lost all my nutrition at mile three. <laughs> it won't go into the details. <laughs> so from that point on, I had to pretty rely on what was at the aid stations, and that's not ideal. I like to use the tailwind stuff as I made that crack joke and the last time I did this video. Um, and I lost all that in mile three. We'll leave it there. Um, eventually, by the time I got around to mile nine-ish, somewhere in that point, my legs basically gave out and the last four miles were run walk. Uh, let's see, mile nine was a 9.35 minute mile, 10, 10.01, 11, 10 minutes, 12, almost 11, 13, over 11, and then I managed to hobble in the last 0.12 miles at a eight minute and 45 minute pace. I, even though I did run walk the last four miles, I did, I'm pretty sure I beat my time last year by about a minute because oddly enough, despite the fact that I've having issues with my Achilles tendon all year, they didn't flare up during the race at all, which was awesome. I think, you know, when it comes to trying to figure out what exactly went wrong here, it could be the lack of nutrition caused problems with my muscles and my muscles gave out. That's entirely possible. Alternatively, I also think that running is my strongest suit. I've been a runner for years before I decided to do stupid Ironman things, or any triathlon for that matter. Um, so I can, I can run like a, a madman at a 5K race, a local 5K race. I show up and I can podium my age group almost guaranteed, and I have a pretty good chance of being in the top 10% even though I'm even racing against high school kids. So I can, I can put up a good fast time on runs, at least short distance runs, longer distance runs, a different story, but I'm a strong runner is the moral of the story. However, I think I relied a bit too much on my natural running ability during training and I didn't do enough long distance and long distance intense runs. I only did one half marathon like two months ago and that's a pretty casual thing. Most of my runs were like seven to nine miles and not much beyond that, and conveniently, that's basically when I blew up. <laughs> so, next year, I think what I'm gonna do differently is de-emphasize the bricks a little bit, because I will do some of those, but I was doing a lot of those instead of maybe just focusing some training days purely on bike for a long distance, and other training days purely on long, more intense runs, and hopefully that can basically improve things to where I can probably get done in under six hours with this race. I think last year when I did this for the first time, I had no idea what is getting into and that's probably why I was a nervous wreck and the race ended up being absolutely miserable, but I was glad that I came back and took another shot at it. It was so much fun this year. And at the day that I'm filming this, uh, Iron Man announced officially that 
2024 Ironman 70.3 Michigan will be back. It'll be once again up in Frankfurt. So there is a chance I will go ahead and try to do this one one more time to break six hours. It is, from what I've been told, one of the easier 70.3 courses out there. So it'd be a great one to try and break six hours. I just want to make sure I hit a few goals over the winter. Ideally, I want to get just a little bit faster in the swim. I mean, if I could get five minutes faster in the swim, that'd be awesome. I really should be able to do about 20 miles an hour on the bike. At least I should be capable of doing that, given my age, athletic ability, and the fact that I can now ride a pretty awesome time trial bike. So I want to focus the winter on increasing my power actually follow some sort of regimen for doing that to get up 20 miles an hour and hopefully that'll knock some decent time off and then next year and over the winter focus a lot more on longer and intense runs so therefore i will be able to break two hours on the half marathon and if all those things line up which i thought they would line up this year and they did not I should be able to break six hours next year at Ironman 70.3 Michigan. I haven't signed up yet. I haven't committed. If I didn't make the decision, it's going to be a few months down the road. So, all right, that is about it. So thank you guys all for watching. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. And once again, congratulations to everyone who made it through Ironman 70.3 Michigan. Hopefully you had an awesome time.